This is an introduction of the Avaya 9650 IP telephone. This telephone would be typically used in a call center environment or perhaps uh, as, a, as an admin's telephone as it has additional buttons over the 9620. Across the top of the display you'll notice the date, time, and the user's extension that has been programmed on this particular telephone. Uh, I'd like to now cover the buttons. The orientation is such that there's three along the side for line appearances, which would typically give you three opportunities to make inbound or outbound calls and reflecting against each of the ex extension that's on that particular phone. This particular phone has a shift button which allows you to see additional feature functionality if it's programmed on this particular phone as there are eight features per shift. So there would be eight on this screen with the shift depression, you would see the additional eight if they were there. Right now on this particular phone, there's one, only one additional option. Now, the way that the display and these buttons correlate here, the dark row of the four buttons here correlate to the dark row on top. Then you've got eight white buttons that correlate to the eight white buttons immediately below that. So this key here would be login, this one would be after call, this dark one would be send call, distance for your orientation purposes. When, and when you shift, then the same row of buttons, again, go, correlates to those white buttons or dark buttons as appropriate. The message button takes the caller to voicemail. Uh, if there's a new voicemail in the mailbox for the user, this will be lit red along with the indicator on the top right corner. That's only for new messages. Any saved messages will, will retain in there, but the user can access it at any time with their PIN number once it's established. The radio button in the center, uh, navigation, oh, and OK. OK is simply uh, more or less like an enter key. Uh, the up and down arrow buttons allow navigation that's within the display. The phone button brings you back to a default condition if you happen to be uh, in some other screens and you're just trying to get back to the original home screen as I'll call it where you see your three line appearances. You would just depress that button it would bring you back to that state. The menu button is mostly for programming. Uh, the typical user would probably not need to have access to that button. Contacts button allows you to program individual uh, contacts on that particular telephone by name and number. A call log uh, would show when you were making calls to and from, if we had a list here, it would show any incoming, outgoing, or missed calls that you could then reselect using the navigation keys and the OK button to go back and make a call back to that individual. The speaker button uh, allows a hands-free situation where the, the, the handset's in the cradle, the headset is off, and you would talk through the speaker of the phone then. The headset button works with the user's headset which, by the way, is easily connected to the cord that's attached to the back of the phone. That provides the connection. The volume button controls the volume in two ways. If the handset and the headset are hung up and off, it controls the ringer volume. And if you are on a call or on the headset, it then doubles as the volume for that handset or headset. Mute button is just mute when you're on the call. It pretty much uh, blocks you out so that you cannot be heard on the other end. That's simply a depressing it again, goes ahead and allows you to have that conversation. I'd like to demonstrate uh, some simple call uh, procedures. To make a call, simply lift up the handset and you would dial the extension of the other phone. In this case, I'm just dialing an extension. And you'll notice that the screen has changed now to four new options because the call is in progress. Now I can do a hold, conference, transfer, or drop. If I wanted to transfer this call, I would simply hit the darkened key that matches that, key, that transfer option, dial the party's extension, and do a, do a transfer complete and it sends that caller off. Now that's considered a, a blind transfer. I did not introduce the caller and I just sent the party on to that other phone. If you wanted to do an introduction before you did the transfer, you would simply wait for the party to answer the call, 
make the introduction, and then hit the complete button that will complete the transfer at that point. Conference feature, pretty similar. So I've got the party on there. I want to do a, another conference or bring in a third party, so I'm going to hit that darken button for conference. Now I've got the buttons have changed again. Now I'm doing a join, drop, hold, or cancel. I want to join the conference, so I hit join, and those three parties are now matched up together. And now if you're, if you're in an agent environment where you need to be able to log into this phone with your agent ID, you're going to come in in the morning and you're going to notice that you've got some buttons on here that are specific to an agent. Log in, log out, auto in, aux work, and so forth. You would simply hit the corresponding button for login. You'll get dial tone and you hear a three beep confirmation tone. That is your signal that you have successfully logged in with your specific agent ID. You'll also notice that a, another red light has come on at this point, and it's pointing to this aux work. That's the default setting uh, that an agent comes into, and it's, it just means that you're logged in. It doesn't mean that you're ready to receive calls yet. Uh, aux work has uh, several codes associated with it that you can get from your supervisor. They typically, you would go into aux work uh, after you've completed a call and you're trying to finish up some paperwork or perhaps close out some, uh, some screens on your computer for that user as you're not quite ready to take the next call. To get into the queue, you would want to be auto in. That's this button. Now that, that changed from aux to auto in and you're in the queue and you're ready to receive calls from the queue. At the end of the day, when you're finished, you simply hit the log out button and again you'll get that 3 beep confirmation tone. If your supervisor has requested that your agent ID be configured with what's commonly known as ACD or zip tone, the headset button must be active before you log in with your agent ID. You'll see that it turns red, you'll have it on your headset attached, you'll then log in and your aux work light will come on. Kind of a note, if you don't have the headset active and you make an attempt to log in, your login will not stay in place. It will log you back out within a couple of seconds. When in doubt, uh, always have the headset on before logging in. After the, lo after the login goes to aux work, you then can go to auto in and you'll be prepared to receive calls from the queue.